Russia is amassing troops close to the border of Ukraine. It's carrying out military exercises with Belarus. And President Biden has this message. If Russia makes a choice to further invade Ukraine, we are jointly ready and all of NATO is ready. NATO is a Western military alliance. The president says it's ready and Russia is focused on it too. The NATO member countries continue to send a large amount of modern weapons to Ukraine to contribute to the modernization of the Ukrainian military. NATO members are flying in what they call lethal aid to Ukraine. Across Eastern Europe, NATO is bolstering its defences. These are British forces on the Poland-Belarus border. And Russian concerns about NATO in Eastern Europe are not new. We will also have to look about those missile installations in, in Romania and Poland or anywhere. On NATO, Russia is looking to the future and the past. It wants NATO to promise that Ukraine will never join. And it wants NATO to withdraw its military deployments of recent years from Eastern Europe. There's no chance of either demand being met. And to understand why, we need to go back to the aftermath of the Second World War. NATO was set up in 1949 by 12 countries. Their mission was to secure peace in Europe, to promote cooperation among its members and to guard their freedom. In reality, this meant countering the growing power of the Soviet Union. And at the heart of NATO's strategy to do this was and is Article 5. It says an attack on one member is considered an attack on all of them. The idea is collective defence. And now with 30 members, NATO continues to state its purpose. Together we are 50% of the world's military might and uh, economic might. So as long as we stand together uh, in NATO, North America and Europe, we are all safe. In recent years, though, NATO's purpose has been questioned. Donald Trump said the US might leave. Emmanuel Macron said NATO was brain dead. There are also questions of commitment. Some NATO members are behind on NATO's military spending targets. And then there's Afghanistan. In response to the 9-11 attacks, NATO triggered its Article 5. NATO members supported America's attack on Al-Qaeda and the Taliban. 20 years later, the US chose to leave Afghanistan unilaterally, with NATO members left to follow suit. For this, and for other reasons too, as the BBC's Katja Adler notes, the longevity of the current show of unity between Western allies isn't guaranteed. Now, whether Russia sees that as a chance, we can't know. Some argue this crisis has galvanized the NATO alliance. But what is clear is that NATO's expansion has angered Vladimir Putin. We won't move one inch towards the east, they told us in the 1990s. And what happened? They deceived us. They brazenly tricked us. That claim is disputed. NATO's expansion, though, is not. The countries here in purple joined before 1997. Since then, the 14 in yellow had their request to join accepted. Many of them are former Soviet states. Five share a border with Russia. Moscow sees all of this as a major threat to its security. The continuation of NATO's open border policy and further movement towards our borders is exactly what threatens us. NATO is not a development institution. It is an instrument of confrontation. It's quite obvious that its expansion poses a threat to us. Russia doesn't see NATO as defensive. It sees it as an extension of American power. It sees its very existence as a reduction of Russian power. And Ukraine finds itself right in the middle of Russian efforts to resist that. It shares borders with Russia and the European Union. And while it's not a NATO member, it's what NATO calls a partner country. That means it could join in the future. And Russia is using its military to make it clear that that mustn't happen. Which brings the EU to this conclusion. We are living, to my understanding, the most dangerous moment for the security in Europe after the end of the Cold War. And in this dangerous moment, Russia sees NATO aggression, NATO sees only defence. What we all see is NATO and Russia playing their part in a global power struggle where China is coming and America's superpower is being put to the test. In a recent essay, Tom McTague wrote in The Atlantic, that moment when we in the West all bathed contentedly under the American sun has gone. In that context, he argues, Putin then is a modern man, reacting to the modern world, using modern methods in an attempt to make something new. And NATO stands in the way of the new world that Putin would like. That's why, whatever the rights and wrongs, the causes of this crisis and the outcome of it both 
connect to NATO.